My name is Brianna Kunkel. I'm a lecturer at UCSB. I also sometimes teach lab courses and lecture courses at Santa Barbara City College. I decided to be a chemistry major in college because I wanted to take a class on chemical instrumentation and learn how instruments work. Uh, and it was an upper level class, and so I had to take all of the chemistry prereqs to take it, but it was great. I loved it. It was my favorite class ever. Uh, so I really like learning about chemistry. And I really, more than that, decided that I really like teaching chemistry because I like to share my excitement about it with other people. I like when students are really successful. I want them to really enjoy chemistry and really understand it and really think about it all the time, if possible. One of the things that I think that's really important when you start college is to think about time management. Like you're going to have a lot of things to do, you're going to have a lot of classes, you're going to have a lot of homework, you're going to have a lot of new friends, you're going to have a lot of things to do. And so I think you want to figure out how to study most effectively for each of your classes and use your time efficiently so that you can be successful and not be spending so much time on all of your classes, even though they do require a lot. One of my tips is that since there's so many resources, you really want to think about which resources are going to help you personally uh, do the best in your class. And it might be different from what someone else is doing. So some people might prefer to read the books. Some people might prefer to do the practice problems. Some people might prefer to do Alex. But in the beginning, and especially in the first weeks of Chem 1A, you really want to think about what can I do in the least amount of time to be most efficient in my studying and most successful. I really like it when people come to my office hours. I think it's really fun to talk to students about their experiences in the class and in college and how everything is going. So I really encourage people to come go to your professor's office hours. I think it's a really good thing because they're real people too. One thing that I think is really good, especially for chemistry, is to do a problem multiple times so you get familiar with that type of problem. This is also really good if you find that you're running out of time on the test to do more repetition of problems. So doing a variety is important, but also repeating them is really important as well. So you're really familiar with the type of problem that you're going to be asked, and then it'll be really um, easy for you to answer it on the test. Uh, so I usually recommend that students complete the problems five times. I know this seems like a lot of times, but it's not that many times. So I recommend that you try to do it first by yourself alone. And if you don't understand it, so that's time one, and then you get some help. So then when you get, go through it with someone else, this is the second time. And then later in the day or later in the week, you do it the third time. So then you're building confidence. You know how to do the problem. And then before the test, you should repeat the same problem so that you solidify that you know how to do the problem before the test. And then before the final, it's good to look at the problem again, especially if it's a problem you are having difficulty with, so that you feel really confident about this type of problem. So I recommend that you do it five times. Um, if you are having a hard time getting all of the problems done, then I think you should just pick some of the problems, like one from each like section maybe, uh, and do those problems multiple times. So it's really important to do a variety as well as have a lot of repetition throughout the entire course. When you're taking a test, your goal is to score the most amount of points as possible. And so you want to do that, like the test has a variety of different questions. So you want to do that by answering the ones that are the easiest for you and the fastest first. So look through the entire test, answer the ones that are easy and fast, and then go back to the ones that are, are maybe of medium difficulty, but you know how to do that take a little bit more time. And then you can spend the rest of the test working on the ones that you either have a difficulty with or that take a longer time to complete, right? This is something that's sort of um, more specific for my class because all of the tests have the same point values. And so um, doing an easy problem and getting it correct will give you the same amount of points as doing one that's more difficult. Uh, if you're taking a test that has different numerical values for each problem, then you want to think about the strategy a little bit different, but try to score as many points as possible, as fast as possible, and then don't freak out, just keep taking the test. Mm -hmm. Graduate school is really fun and it's a good option for a lot of people, so don't be afraid to go to grad school, but it's good to talk to people about to have realistic expectations. 
If you want to go to grad school, or if you're unsure that you want to grad, want to go to grad school, this was certainly the case for me. I didn't know that I wanted to go to grad school when I was in college. Um, but it's really important for you to get to know your professors because recommendation letters will be really important. Your grades will be really important, and it's important to remember that all of your professors went to grad school so they can tell you about their experiences, and then you can get a better idea of what to expect when you're going to grad school. Uh, graduate school is a pretty big time commitment, and so so it's important that you realize that this is what you want to do before you start. If you go to the graduate school in the sciences, it's really important to know that this is more like a job than going to school. So like for chemistry, you'll be working on a project, you'll get paid to go to graduate school, you won't have any like additional loans and stuff. Uh, and you'll be working on a project as like part of your job. So this is a really fun way uh, to see what it's like without having like a, a large lifetime commitment. And then you can see what it's like if you like doing the lab experiments, you can continue. And if you don't, then you can choose a different path. So working in an undergraduate lab is good. It'll give you a lot of experiences. It'll help you make additional contacts. Uh, it's a really good thing to do if you have time to do it.